Hello everybody, it's Ukum Pucky, and today I want to talk to you guys about something that's been weighing on my chest for a while. Something that's been bringing me down. The Call of Duty community and their opinions on which Call of Duty is better. I was just talking to a person in one of my classes that said that he liked Modern Warfare 3 more than Black Ops 1. I don't know if that's true for you. But that is not true for me. I think Modern Warfare 3 and Ghosts are the two worst games um, from the Call of Duty franchise, period. Um, I think all the other ones you can already argue whether they're good or not. And, you know, a lot of it weighs into nostalgia. And I gotta be honest, the reason why, you know, probably why Black Ops 1 is my favorite is because it's the first Call of Duty I actually owned and played thoroughly. And yes, I've played all the Call of Duties. Some more than others. <laughs> like, um, all the Call of Duty's before Black Ops 1, like Modern Warfare 2 and World at War and COD 4, I haven't played as much as any of the Call of Duty's Black Ops 1 and above. But I think out of the. Okay, here, I'm gonna say this, at least. Not to annoy some of those people that are like, yeah, the older Call of Duty's are better because. All that new stuff is garbage. Which. <laughs> They, they probably are, they are probably right, um, but regardless, I'm just going to say, at least Black Ops 1 and, you know, newer, Black Ops 1, I think, is the best. Um, I think that Modern Warfare 3 was bad. I think that Black Ops 2 was the better of the four newer ones, but I still think that Black Ops 2 had some annoying crap in it, like Target Finders and a bunch of bull crap. Um... You know, if they took those out, that would be a really fun game. And I really actually didn't realize how much, you know, memories I had. Even though it was annoying, that was one of the easiest Call of Duties to just hop in a lobby and dominate the other team and get, like, extremely amazing kill streaks. You know, if you would ask me, you know, if I just grew up on Call of Duty Ghosts and someone asked me what a kill streak was, I'd be like, I don't know. What is a kill streak? I don't know what a kill streak is because. Whenever I get uh, one of those little thingies, they don't really do anything. I, I I didn't really even know that was a kill streak. I thought they just came up randomly. You know why? Because the kill streaks are so bad in ghosts. They're unright. I don't even know like the names of any of them. They're all so boring and so like useless that I don't even care. I don't understand why they got rid of the spy plane. Why did we have to put sat comes sat comes off sat? What do I keep saying? Sat comms in the game because they had it made it so that way the developers had to put little nooks and crannies and little campy spots in order to place your dumb satcoms down which also you know like i said gave way to spaces for camping and stuff so i don't understand why in the world they changed that um also there's a bunch of just Things that have been in all the other Call of Duties that Ghost does not have. For instance, when you're in the game and you look at the scoreboard, you can't see how good your ping is or, you know, how good your connection is. Why? Like, what? <coughs> it's 2014, buddy. Why can't I, why can't I check and see, oh, am I lagging? Is that what's going on? Why I'm, like, teleporting across the map? Here, let me see if I'm, like, w have one bar or... You know, just a general sense of how good my connection is. Connection is. Oh wait, I can't check because Ghost doesn't let you. <sighs> all the little features and stuff like that that have been in all the other Call of Duties and options and menus and stuff suck in Ghost. I don't know. They're like, yeah, pretty. Much, I guess we're just gonna like spend our time making like rendering a good dog in the campaign so Riley looks realistic or something. I don't know what they are doing, but I just don't like what they what they tried to innovate on because the the few things that are different about that game, I don't even they're like, "Okay, so what? Like that should have been in you know, all the other Call of Duties, like, you're you're just now putting it in. Like, the fact that you're able to customize the characters, I don't care. I don't even, I don't even know how to customize them. I don't give a crap. Um, 
the fact that um, that the maps absolutely are trash. The flow of the maps are just garbage. I do not like ghosts, and I cannot stand Modern Warfare 3 either. I don't know what's wrong with an Infinity Ward. I don't know if it's because um, the good half of the you know development team went over and created Respawn, and they're making working on Titanfall now. Um, I don't know if that's what what's the case, but I'm not getting the next Infinity Ward. Uh, you can um, quote me on that. Um, I'm saving. I'm keeping my money for the next um, Treyarch game and. If the next Sledgehammer game or whatever is decent, is like amazing, then maybe. But I highly doubt that because the only Sledgehammer game that that they I think that they actually did a fair amount of help on was Modern Warfare 3, and I think that that was the worst Call of Duty. So uh, it's probably not gonna get the the next Call of Duty if it is Sledgehammer. But I'm here to talk about the best Call of Duty, not the worst ones, and that is. Black Ops 1. Alright, so first off, the setting. There has not been a single Call of Duty that has come close to the uniqueness of Black Ops. Because Cold War, guys, like, has the, have you ever seen another Cold War shooter? I haven't. And there's probably is another, you know, weird, not very popular first person shooter that is taking place in the Cold War. But I thought it was a very, you know, unique and cool setting and I really actually like that the campaign and the story and how you were trying to kill Castro and this whole entire thing that was happening in Cuba and stuff I really liked it alright so first off I, I liked the campaign I thought it was decent um, I don't think it was the best um, Call of Duty campaign because apparently Modern Warfare 2 campaign was amazing and World at War campaign was amazing and COD 4 campaign was amazing so I'm not gonna say that it's the best campaign, but I'm, I will say I like the Black Ops 1 campaign more than Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, and Ghosts, okay? And then, um, you know, not only that, but, you know, because of the Cold War, it brought in a bunch of cool settings for the maps and for the guns and stuff. I love the guns in this game. I think that this is the game with the coolest guns there are so many guns that are fun to use and are really satisfying and cool looking I absolutely love my favorite pistol out of all the Call of Duties is the M1911 that is such a like a classic cool um, it's oh, I mean it just there's something about like the 1960s that just like amazes me and just kinda like puts me in in a sense of awe I guess and uh, the M1911 just has that sense of like, yeah, this is like the classic 1960s pistol. And then cool things like, you know, the dual wheeled HS10s and, you know, the G11 was an interesting gun. There were a lot of cool, fun guns to use. My favorite gun has come is out of that game, which is the AUG. I don't really even know why, but I just love the AUG. And there are just like a lot of cool guns that have come from... Um, Black Ops 1, and I think it's mainly just because of the setting of cold, uh, the Cold War setting, and also the map design was amazing. I love the maps in Black Ops 1. I easily think if you were to take all the, the um, right out of the ba box, you know, original maps from each Call of Duty, I think that Black Ops 1 overall has the best ones. There are countless ones. Here, you know what? I'm just going to search this up really quick because I don't want to sound like an idiot. Um, but there was Villa, and there was... Um, Villa was amazing. I loved the look of it, um, and I loved how there was, like... Um, it's tied in with the campaign or whatever. There were, like, the cool palm trees, and the map design was really cool. I loved playing Domination on that map. I always did good on that map. That was really cool. And then there was, uh... What the heck? Okay, so... Here it is. Alright, Array. At first, I didn't really like this map because it was pretty big. And, um... It was good for snipers or whatever. But if you use the map right, you can still use assault rifles and stuff on this map. And it is amazing. I really do like this, um... Map. And I thought that it was, like, pretty cool. Because it, it had that big, um... 
what, what is it called? Like satellite dish thingy tower, you know, at the end of the map. Cracked was actually a good game. I mean, like, a, an actually a good map. Um, it was one of those maps that everyone um, voted against. Like, didn't vote for when Black Ops 1 was, like, first came out. No one voted for Cracked. But playing it now, um, going back on my PS3 and playing Black Ops 1 now when Ghost is out, all the people that are still playing Black Ops 1 have realized that some of the maps that everyone, you know, didn't vote for are actually good maps, and I never notice it. Um, is, so I know for a fact that this isn't for nostalgia reasons. I'm not just saying every single map is amazing just because this is my first Call of Duty and it's so cool and I just love it and oh my gosh, I love Black Ops 1, this is the greatest thing ever. But I actually really do like Cracked. Like, it was just like an actually a fun map. It's pretty ugly as crap. Um, you know, Call of Duty completely overdo, uh, has overdone that whole like rundown city with a bunch of exposed rebar and broken concrete type deal in their maps. But hey, it's it's still a good map. Um, Crisis was another one of those things that no one voted for, which is an amazing map. That map was really fun. Um, Firing Range, classic. Firing Range was freaking awesome. I love Firing Range. I can play that all day, every day. I think it was one of those maps that everyone liked, but it wasn't like Nuketown, where even though a lot of people liked it, a lot of people hated it too. I have never come across someone who just despises Fire Range. There are people that, that do hate Firing Range, I'm sure, but Firing Range was an amazingly um, designed map, and the setting for it, you know, the idea of just being in a f military practice, like, firing range is really cool. Um, and then the fact that they redid Firing Range in Black Ops 2 is pretty cool, too, I guess. Grid was another amazing map. I love the map design. I always have fun on Grid. Hanoi was that um, the third of the three maps that everyone, you know, didn't vote for. But now that I look at it... Um, isn't another pretty good map. Um, I actually have a lot of fun on Hanoi because people actually vote for it now, and, I'm, and now I actually understand the flow of the map and everything. It's a good map. Havana was an amazing map. That was so cool, and I liked how it tied in with the campaign being a Cuban city and stuff. Um, all like the fast-paced paced action and stuff. Being able to flank around from one side to the other was fun. Jungle was one of my favorite large maps because even though I didn't really vote for it, um, if like, you know, it was going up against firing range or something like that, um, jungle was still really fun and the setting of it was awesome. Just being in a straight up jungle. I don't, I haven't actually seen that many maps surprisingly in Call of Duty where it's just straight up jungle. Um, launch was okay. It was still amazing, but, um, but if you, like, think about it, like, if this was put in, like, Modern Warfare 3 or something, this would be a really good map, because Modern Warfare 3 maps sucked. Um, but since it's Black Ops, it's it's going up against a lot of good maps, so... But Launch really was a cool idea, and then, you know, they reused and recycled that whole, like, launch, you know, sat, like, uh, rocket launch test pad thing setting for a lot of maps now and there's way too many of them but i think this is an amazing map nuketown the classic nuketown as much as people hate it man like some of the most simple map design and it was the small like the most fast-paced action even though you died a lot if you weren't good in that map you still had a crap ton of fun because you you had so many kills or whatever, and I love the setting. The setting of you being in a nuclear, like, testing ground, like, was is super cool. And I liked how, how, like, colorful it was, yet it wasn't, like, really, you know, girly and stuff. Like, it was, it was colorful because it was set in the 1950s as, like, a 1950s uh, to 60s, like, nuclear testing site, you know. So it was really cool, and it was a nice map to look at also when you were playing classic map um radiation amazing map i love that and i love how like dude ghost has less freaking map like um what is it called when the map is you're able to manipulate the map 
or whatever by pushing, you know, switches or, you know, the map does it on its own with the crane, you know, like that map in Black Ops 2 where the, the, um, cargo or whatever, how the car, the crates moved and stuff. Black Ops 1 had this and Black Ops 1 has got like ghost beat when it comes to that, um, map, you know, the changing of the map or whatever. With the radiation, like, doors come in, you're able to open and close them. And the fact that they were on opposite side of the maps was very strategic because, you know, you had to go from one side to the other to get open and close the door. Um, and then there's also that little, like, conveyor belt that brought you up. There's a bunch of stuff in this game that had a bunch of cool little things that if, you know, you went too far out, you know, you get mined to death or, you know, you can close stuff on people with doors but yeah yeah i loved um radiation summit oh my gosh that was one of the best snow maps summit was amazing i loved summit um villa i already talked about and wmd i love wmd so to sum things up i didn't hate a single map from black ops 1 there's not a single map that i could say that i didn't like the map that i probably would like uh like the least uh, not that launch is a bad map, I guess. I just never did good on it. Launch or cracked, I guess. But still, those are really good maps. So, I mean, it's like map design is amazing in Black Ops 1, right? And I don't really think people, like, realize that. Um, and then apparently, I didn't get the DLC, but apparently the DLC for Black Ops was amazing. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. There's a bunch of other reasons why I like Black Ops 1 more than a lot of the other things. But, um, you know, there weren't that many annoying things in Black Ops 1 either. Like, the only thing that comes to my head was Second Chance. And that doesn't really annoy me that much because it doesn't happen very often now. I don't know if it happened more when I was playing it when I was younger. When everyone's like, yeah, Second Chance is the best thing. You know, you can get revived and you don't have to die. Yeah, I don't even see it that often. But yeah, that really should have been taken out. That shouldn't have never even been in the game. But I mean, other than that, there's not too many things I would change about that game. Um, not a lot of annoying stuff. The kill streaks were amazing in that game. They were really fun and just. They were just good old chopper gunner, you know. Uh, you got your heli cop your heli, you got cool things like the napalm strike and the rolling thunder and the attack dogs and stuff. That was really fun. Um, so yeah, just because the, f the fact that I don't even know what I'm uh, like talking about anymore and the fact that this has been going on for a really long time, I think I'm going to end it soon. But um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. This has been the Ookum Buggy. See you guys. Peace.